everybody know um, I just took a devastating loss. It, you know, this is, this is, you know, I mean, how do you prepare for the loss of the single most important human being in your world? Um, you don't. It, it is nothing that can prepare you for when you get rocked. Um, when you get rocked, and, 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 and I mean when, when life throws a building on your head, there's nothing on planet Earth that can prepare you for it. Um, for any of you guys who don't know, um, August 26, I lost my mother. Uh, this is this is not just anybody. My mother. This was my world. This is what was my best friend. It was the first person I called in the morning. We spoke several times a day. My mother was sick for the last couple of years, but I didn't expect this. Um, my mother was a fighter, and even in you know the the last two weeks as I um you know as I'm just having I'm forced to live without this woman it's, it's as simple as that I'm forced to live without somebody I have known and loved since I came into this world and now it's a reality that I'm not the first person to deal with this and I won't be the last person to deal with this but I'm learning to live with it and I'm just telling y'all there was nothing in me like up until about a half hour ago. I wasn't coming on this live. I've been doing very few phone calls. Uh, and for all of my movies, if you've been reaching out to me and I haven't hit you back, I apologize. This I, I got to I got to find a way to. Um, to come to some kind of peace and I'm just not there yet. So. Over the past two weeks. You, you know, you start to hear different stories and different things uh, about my mother. You know, people are telling me and I was having one conversation with my sister in particular. And my sister was telling me how my mother, who we knew she was sick. She was in the bed for um, an extended period of time. And um, my sister would always tell me how my mother would get up every day, no matter how sick she was. And she would literally walk from her bedroom to the kitchen and that walk that walk was like running a marathon with no stops with no water with nothing for, for my mother that walked just from her bedroom to the kitchen it took every ounce of strength from her and she used to hold on to the wall like literally hold on to the wall and she didn't want anybody to help her she needed to get to that kitchen on her own. And my sister would yell at her and tell her, Ma, why are you doing this? Go lay down. And my mother would make it to the kitchen, be out of breath, and look up at her and say, I have to press on. I have the only way that I'm going to get better is if I fight through this thing. And if me making it from that bedroom to the kitchen, if that little walk is for me, is exercise. For me, is something mental that tells me that I'm still in this thing called life. I'm still in the fight. I can still get up in the face of all adversity and go toe to toe with the Grim Reaper on a daily basis. Then you got to let me do this. And I could only smile because that was my mother. That's who she was. She was a fighter to the end. But as y'all know, this week, this past week, we, we just went through the 20th anniversary of 9-11. 20 years ago, over 3,000 people perished, lost their life in a senseless act of terrorism. And as those documentaries were coming on, there was... One documentary in particular that caught my eye because I had never seen it. And this particular documentary showed inside the towers. And there were these two brothers that were filming a documentary about what it takes to become a firefighter. And they have been filming this down at engine number one, lower Manhattan, 
for at least four or five months. And they have been following these probates and these new guys who wanted to be firefighters around and there was no fires. So they're in the firehouse. They're following these guys going through their basic training, coming up in the ranks. And for like four months, there was no fires. And they kept asking the chief, when is it going to be a fire? We can't do a documentary about a new firefighter if there's no fires. And every day the chief would tell them, be careful what you wish for, because you just might get it. And the first day that they ever got a fire just happened to be September 11th, 2001. But there's one thing that stood out to me about this documentary, because when the calls came in that morning, nobody had an idea that 9-11 was going to become what it did. And as they followed the firefighters in to the lobby of the World Trade Center, and you started to see the magnitude of the devastation, and you could see on the faces of these firefighters, we didn't prepare for this. Some of us been on this job for 20 and 30 years. But we ain't ready for this. And they started to look around and they noticed all of the elevators were out. They seen people in front of them running, burning alive. You could hear the noise right outside the lobby of bodies dropping off those towers. And they had to go up 80 flights knowing what was waiting for them with no elevator. And the part that I loved when I was watching this, because if I never had respect for what those firefighters went through, I got it that day over this past weekend. Because you saw them lacing up and putting on 60 pounds of additional equipment to march up 80 flights of stairs. And they said that going up one flight would take each firefighter at least one minute to do with 60 pounds of gear on them. And they had to go up 80 flights. And that's before they even had a chance to do their job. And one by one, you saw these guys and they were leaving the lobby and they were going in to certain death. But for them, that instinct to fight, I got a job to do. I know what could be waiting for me upstairs. I know that I might go up and never come down. But I'm going to do it anyway. I got to fight them. I got to show up. And as I was sitting here today and I was thinking to myself, Sean, you're not even ready. You have nothing to share. You've been down and you've been out. You've been soaking. You've been mourning. You got nothing. And I thought about my mother and I thought about that documentary. And I was like, how is it? They were facing the ultimate test. This was their life. Their life was on the line. And you telling me when things get hard, yes, you got knocked in the face. Yes, you are going through it. But what would your mother say if you didn't show up and fight? And I'm telling y'all movers today, we're going to keep this short and sweet because it really comes down to a very simple choice that you all have to make. We all are going through something. I can tell you, as I'm going through this journey, I am hypersensitive that there is somebody else that is grieving right now. I'm hypersensitive that there is somebody else that's mourning right now. I'm hypersensitive that there is somebody else they're just in a bad place right now. But 
that is no excuse. It is no excuse for you to tap out, for you to let that be the thing that prevents you from going about your dreams. It is no excuse for any of us to say, you know what? Life dealt me a bad hand. Life dealt me a bad blow. And now all of the work that I put in, all of the time I invested, all of the plans that I had, I'm going to give up. You don't do that, movers. I can't do that. Trust me when I tell y'all, I don't want to be here. Trust me when I tell y'all, nothing about what I'm doing right now is coming from a place of go, 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 rah, rah, rah. This is inspiration. This is my life. But either you're built for it or you're not. What are you working on, movers? What is it that's looking you in the face that is not working in your favor? What is it that uphill hill that you're climbing and you can't seem to get to the top. I know some of y'all are looking down a tunnel and you can't see the light at the other side. You've been walking down that tunnel. You've been doing everything that you know to do. And still, there is not one ray of hope. There's not one speck of light. I'm telling you to keep fighting, keep moving forward. That's all you can do. That's what we were put here to do. There is nobody who's reached extraordinary heights on this planet that hasn't been in the same place that I'm sitting at in the same place that some of y'all are sitting at. What is your excuse for not going forward? What is your excuse for not taking one more step? I always tell y'all the most important step you will ever take in this life is your next one. I just didn't know why I was saying that to y'all. I was the one that needs to hear that. Every day that I wake up, I have to remember that. One more step, Sean. Just one more step. It's going to be all right. Sunshine, it's going to come out again. It can't rain forever. And for some of y'all who are sitting there, and you thinking that it might be over. You done ran out of options. You ran out of people to call. You have done everything humanly possible that you know how to do. Take your next step. That's all you got to do. Keep fighting. My mother was holding on to that wall. And she was dragging herself just to get to the kitchen. But it was about that next step. When those firefighters were going up 80 flights of steps before they even got to work, it was about the next step, just showing up, pressing on, fighting. And that's what I want y'all to do, y'all. We got to fight and we got to really, really, in the midst of it all, You know, this community, I always tell y'all, this ain't a Sean thing. This is a us, a we thing. We got to lock into one another. And I can tell y'all, even if I haven't hit y'all back, it's your DMs, it's your texts, it's y'all inboxing me, it's y'all saying it's going to be all right. That's where I get my strength to take this next step. Let's encourage each other. And more important, Let's become hypersensitive to the fact that we're not the only ones going through it. And some of the best of the best have saw no way out. But they fought, they showed up, and they took that next step. Please, don't give up the fight, y'all. Show up to life. Show up and take your next step. Peace and love. I will leave it there, y'all. Next week, I'll come back with, 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 with something that is more in line with my inspiration. But I'm really just, I just needed to speak to from the heart tonight. Please keep me and my family 
in your prayers and understand that even beyond us is somebody out there who's hurt. Is somebody out there right now, even if they're not dealing with grief in terms of the loss of someone they love, somebody can't pay their light bill. Somebody don't know how they're going to pay next month's rent. Somebody is trying to figure out how I'm going to keep this business afloat. Let's keep each other in our prayers. Let's keep each other top of mind. And lastly, I will tell you, because sometimes we go through these things and we think we're alone. We think we're the only one that's ever been here. You're not alone. You just, you're not alone. Somebody else is out there and they're in the same place as you. So please pray for them. And I'm asking them to pray for you. Peace and love, y'all. See y'all next Monday.